Perplexity released a brand new feature this week that absolutely destroys Gemini, Grok, and ChatGPT in deep research. It brings it to the next level. It is absolutely incredible. And all these other companies are going to have to make changes to how their deep research works to match the output of Perplexity. Why? Well, let me show you. Evaluate early enterprise use cases of Microsoft AI agent platform with a focus on integration challenges and productivity gains. So we can see here on perplexity, we have this tab bar at the top and we can see all the different sources that it has gone through. And if you're using deep research, regardless of which platform you're using, you still have to go through and vet your sources. It just makes it a good starting point. But anyway, we have tasks and tasks is basically telling you, Hey, we are going through these different websites and it tells you exactly what it's done for each and every single website, what it's done with Python and why is it using Python? Well, like I mentioned, it creates its own assets. So we can actually see here, it is using Python to make charts, graphs, everything else. We can go to labs, which gives you the entire summary overview and we can kind of see here and it's going to look very similar to deep research on any other platform. You have quick links to the original source. We can kind of scroll through. We can see all the information we want, we need, but what sets it apart is it creates graphs based off the data that it generates. It can create spreadsheets. It can create a full dashboard, which makes it absolutely incredible. And that's what we're gonna show you in the side-by-side -side comparison with all the other ones that's coming up shortly in this video. But you can see the use cases and AI agent productivity gains. So we can see the time saved versus the gain. So meeting summaries, of course, that would be a major way that AI saves time. And you can actually use deep research now to gain back not just a massive amount of text, but also like good charts and good graphics and good information to go alongside with your data. So we can see here, this is its answer and it is ridiculously long and it goes right in depth. And then what gets really cool is it has this related down here. So we can actually just click one, like what productivity improvements have early adopters experience with Microsoft AI agent platform. We can click that, it is going to create a plan and it's going to start deep researching that to add on to the big behemoth answer we had before. We are on the Perplexity website here and at the bottom here, we have this new button called Labs. So when we click that, they are going to give you suggestions of things that we can create using labs. We can type in any prompt we want and the results are absolutely wild. Why? Because they create assets, they create all sorts of graphs, images, everything. It compiles it all. It looks fantastic. And in this video, we're going to do a side-by-side -side comparison between Rock, Gemini, ChatGPT, and Perplexity. But you can see here, there are some different ones we can pick and we can say, okay, map the growth of celebrity branded products or map major political protests or evaluate early cases of Microsoft AI agents. So if we click this one, for example, it's going to say nine minutes left to gather data and sources. We can click this here. This is going to enable notifications. So if we have notifications enabled, it might pop up on your browser saying, hey, do you want to get notified when it is done researching. So it is going to start gathering data and start researching exactly like the other tools would be. I also gave it this prompt here to analyze. So analyze historical Stanley Cup final data, home away performance, similar finalist profiles, alongside the current 2024-2025 playoff journey and metrics from both teams. This deep research aims to create a dashboard highlighting betting angles where the current odds may diverge from historical precedents or the team's true strengths. So it is going through, and this is perplexity, it is getting all the data, it is telling you where it's pulling this data from, it's using some Python, which I'm gonna show you in this video what it is actually doing. It is making assets for us based off different things that it's pulling up based off different data. So I have this prompt going here. It's about a minute left. I did it on Gemini as well. The same exact prompt, just so you guys can see. It said, hey, do you wanna start researching? I said, yes, start researching. It is looking at 58 different websites. We have ChatGPT. ChatGPT took a different approach. 
It said, who are the teams in the finals? I has no idea. And then it says, what type of betting angle are you looking at? So anyway, I answered those questions and it says, great, it's going to start going through. There are 24 sources here. And then we have Grok, same prompt. It took about five minutes and 58 seconds to go and it is done, but we're gonna come back to this to compare all of them when they are all finished. Before we get to the results, I wanna remind you to subscribe. I cover AI on a daily basis. The world of AI is changing so quickly. New things happen every day and I make videos every day to try to keep you up to date, keep you in the loop of everything that's happening. So subscribe, it's completely free. Let's go see the results. We have this one here, which is the map growth of celebrity branded products since 2020. And we can kind of scroll through and we can see the overall celebrity growth versus the overall industry. So we can kind of see a nice chart. We could go through and read all of it and we really have to in order to vet our sources and make sure the data is all accurate. But just as a overall quick glance, we get a really good visual here that it has generated for us. We can actually see the average revenue by celebrity brand and all sorts of different information. It brings back a really, really nice infographic here, the wealthiest celebrity beauty brands in 2023, and it gives us the amount. So it made this image to go along with our request, which makes it mind boggling how good this is for research because it's like research to another level. So let me show you the side-by-side -side comparison now. We're going to start with Grok, and you can see it took five minutes and 58 seconds. There are 63 sources. We can kind of scroll through and see everything is done, but let's look at its output. So we have our key points here, and it says, research suggests the home team wins about 60% of the final games. And honestly, I've kind of glanced through most of this. It goes on to basically say that the home team has the advantage, but Florida has a good away record. So if you keep going down, its chart is like this doesn't even look that great in my opinion, but it doesn't matter, it's all about the data. And it basically says that the Oilers are the slight favorites due to home ice advantage and historical trends. Panthers exceptional weight performance, better goaltending and superior penalty kill indicates they may be undervalued at a hundred plus odds. So it tells you where the odds could come from and it surfed 63 pages, but it basically Grok really honed in on home and away records rather than any other historical data. We have Gemini here, which did a much better job than Grok. And it says the Stanley Cup Finals presents a compelling rematch between the Edmonton Oilers and the defending Stanley Cup champions, Florida. So at least it understands that is happening. It's a rematch. So it goes into the rematch and statistics there. And then it dives deeper into just Edmonton and then it will do the same thing with Florida and it gives all these different stats and information about each team, safe percentages, shots, individual players, key player analytics. And it has all this data, all these nice charts that it has generated for us and different tables. So it has a much better understanding of the bigger picture where I thought Grok was more like, hey, home team good, home team win. This one is saying, hey, here's all this data, here's all these things to consider, and here's all the potential things that can happen, here's historical final precedents and betting angles that can occur, and even has percentages with frequencies and things like that. We can see huge history of different teams, we can see rematch dynamics, it takes into account a lot more elite goal scorers. So it gives us a much better analytical approach to our question. So it says dashboard data points. So this is the dashboard it has created for us, which is just a nice little chart. And this looks substantially better than Grok, but you're about to see it get even better. But basically it said series winner value is on Florida despite Edmonton having the home ice advantage. It goes into other information as to why it is picking Florida. We can also export this to a doc. We can copy the contents and something new is this here, which we can create a web page, an infographic, a quiz, or an audio overview. So let's try an infographic just for fun. Let's see what it comes up with because it didn't make it on the start but I'm gonna give it the chance to compete and compare with perplexity. So we have the Gemini infographic that it made and it gave us this HTML code here. It didn't actually compile it into an actual infographic. So I threw it into CodePen just to see what it looks like. And yeah, this is what we end up with. I could modify the code to make it actually work, but that's not the point. The point is, is the output that it gives you, it attempts 
to generate an infographic through HTML and it doesn't really work very well, but it still did a better job than Grok, so there's that. Let's move on. So we have ChatGPT done and we have our series contact, so it knows that they played last year despite asking me who is playing. We have the Edmonton Oilers, so it goes through their offense, their special teams, home and road, and then it does the same thing for Florida. We have historical trends, betting angles, and line values, so it talks about different games, different things in the series, and then it has our conclusion. So while the result is better than Grox, it is worse than Gemini's. But here is the absolute best, the winner in my opinion, is Perplexity, which is miles ahead of the others, because if you remember, a prompt said to create a dashboard highlighting the betting angles. So that's what Perplexity did. We have our dashboard here, which is wild, and our dashboard actually shows like high value into certain categories. It shows us medium values, rematch, revenge factor, the McDavid factor. So it understands more than just, hey, this is the home team. And it also created a whole dashboard for us. So team performance. So we can actually see Edmonton versus Florida in this nice little side-by-side -side chart. We can see historical Stanley Cup trends so we can see this type of information outcomes and we can see what the outcomes are in favor probabilities so it actually created a really nice easy to die really nice easy to digest dashboard that we can look at and if we keep scrolling down we have access to all the other written text based around the graphs and things that it made based off our prompt so we can see here the answer that it came back with perplexity came back with is substantially more in depth and more detailed than any of the other deep research models that exist right now I'm going to reiterate this again, just because you're using deep research, you always want to check the sources. You want to make sure they are credible. In this case, I am just looking at who's going to win a playoff series and it looked to use data from different hockey websites and stuff like that. So I'm going to say that the data was credible, but if you're using it for something more scientific, you might want to go and check to say, hey, are these journals good? But regardless, as a starting point, Perplexity wins hands down. You can get a nice little overview, nice little graphs. You can actually make it code different stuff. And later this week, I will have a video dedicated to try to code using Perplexity. So if you guys want to see that, don't forget to subscribe, like the video. It tells the algorithm you enjoy this type of content. And let me know what your thoughts are in the comments below. Again, don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Just come and see at FranklinAir.com where you're meant to be.